Hi class, welcome to module five, what not to put in your compost. This is a really important module because many of the items we're gonna discuss are somewhat debatable. If you live in a very rural area versus an urban one, your neighbors probably won't complain if they're a mile down the road if your compost is smelly. But if you're in a suburb or some sort of urban area and your compost pile is maybe a little smelly because of what you put in there, that might not be such a good thing. So remember that a lot of the things we're gonna talk about are up for some debate, but it's gonna depend a lot on where you live, where your compost is, and what kind of system you use. We all know that organic matter is biodegradable and will eventually rot. However, there are some items that you should not put in your compost pile, and that's what we're here to discuss. During decay, some things give off offensive odors. We all know that we've driven past a dump or a landfill in the past and you roll your windows up because it smells bad. Your compost pile could turn into a similar situation based on what you put into it if you're not careful. So we're gonna discuss that. Some items attract pests like mice, rats, opossums, and other scavengers. This is a huge problem even in urban areas because we do have nocturnal creatures out there that like to go through trash and they like to eat certain things out of compost piles. So we're gonna discuss that as well. They can attract annoying insects like flies. You do not want a million flies in your backyard or next to your neighbor's fence if your compost pile is not working properly. So keep that in mind also. Some items have chemicals that either slow down the composting process or when you use the finished compost get transferred to your garden. So those should be avoided as well. Some things simply do not compost or they might take decades to break down completely and we're gonna discuss that as well. First and foremost, here are some items that you should definitely never ever throw in your compost pile. Staples and other metal like this pile of nails, that can be really unsafe, especially as they begin to rust. If you're sifting your compost by hand, or handling your compost as you're applying it to your garden or your lawn, that's something that could be a tetanus risk. It will eventually oxidize, rust, and disintegrate, but that's something we want to avoid putting in our pile for simple safety concern. That same thing goes for glass. We never want to throw glass in our compost because as you're working with that material, it's very easy to slice or cut yourself. So avoid putting glass in the pile. Plastic or plastic coated items, those are not something we want in the pile, but as some of us do um, compost our junk mail, sometimes we just throw things in whole and you end up with the plastic windows or the, the credit cards they're trying to send you, all of that ends up in there. That can be sifted out when you harvest your compost. And we'll talk about that more when we cover how to harvest and utilize your compost towards the end of this course. So though we should avoid plastic or plastic coated materials, keep in mind that that can somehow be physically removed after the compost has fully broken down. A really good example of that also would be food waste. Sometimes there's plastic forks or knives or spoons in there, um, kind of mixed in with the leftover food that you might be composting. You can always sift that out later, but it will not break down in the pile. Synthetic materials like nylon, polyester, things of that nature. Um, a good example of that would be the strings that hold bales of straw together. Those materials will never break down. Old clothing too, if they're made out of synthetic material, that should not put, be put in a compost pile. Aluminum should stay out as well. It's not gonna break down. That's your cans, your tin foil. Again, if you're using kitchen waste, keep that tin foil out of there. Same goes for styrofoam. Styrofoam lasts for, forever. <laughs> It'll just break down into smaller and smaller particles, but it will never break down or biodegrade completely unless it's one of the newer styrofoam products that are made out of an organic material like corn or soy. So it's good to check the label, but in general, keep styrofoam out of your pile. Here are some items that compost very, very slowly. On the market now, there's a lot of compostable cutlery um, they're great for picnics, large gatherings, and events. However, they take a very long time to break down in a traditional compost pile. It's best with your compostable cutlery to break it down into smaller pieces so that it breaks down a lot faster. And you can do that with a pair of hand pruners like you would use in your garden. Often they're made out of bamboo or wood products. Um, sometimes they're made out of corn. But 
those are really good things to cut up and almost treat them like your woody material, your twigs, your sticks, your branches. Kind of shred them up or just cut them up into smaller bits. Hair. Hair is one, especially if you have a big fluffy dog that a lot of folks do try to compost, um, or if you're a barber or have a salon. Hair does break down eventually, but it takes a very long time. Hair actually does have quite a bit of nitrogen in it, so it's not the worst thing to add to a compost situation, but keep in mind that you know, even five, 10 years from now, you might still have big clumps of hair in that area. So it does take a long time. And this is a little gruesome, but when they exhume bodies, guess what? The hair is still there, the bones are still there when everything else is gone, right? That's a little gross to think about, but that's also why we don't include bones in our compost pile also. Unless they're ground up, they're gonna take a very long time to weather and break down into a small enough particle size that you can then screen it out and put it into your garden. So in general, we avoid bones. Leather is another natural material um, that will eventually rot, but because it's been tanned and cured in such a way that prevents rot and prevents that hide from breaking down, it can take decades for it to fully decompose. So avoid leather products in your pile as well. Rubber is another great thing that's made from a natural material. Remember, rubber is either synthetic um, or it's you know, derived from plant sap from a tree. It takes forever to break down as well. Um, it does get kind of brittle and break into smaller and smaller pieces, similar to like a styrofoam cup would do, but it's not the best thing to add to your pile. Here are some things that either attract animals, rodents, flies, things like that, or they can be really foul in odor. Um, we live in South Louisiana here, so we often have crawfish boils or shrimp boils, or we might boil some crabs for dinner. All of that shell material and leftover bits is compostable, but as anyone who lives here in the summertime will tell you, it gets very, very stinky. So though fish and seafood products are very good in a compost pile, and they include a lot of good um, nutri nutrition for your plants and for your garden, you do want to bury them completely or compost them in an area where the odor is not going to be a problem. And it can become a problem very quickly. Dairy products, that's another one. A lot of pests like raccoons, opossums, rats, they love to come in and eat dairy if it's in your food scraps. Um, it's also something that gets very stinky if it's left outside unrefrigerated for any amount of time. Oils actually mess with the microbiology of the pile. Remember, we talked about how compost is alive. The oils are something that those little microorganisms don't really digest or break down. So it's best to keep oily food products, um, even paper towels that might have been soaked in oil if you were cleaning a cast iron pan, something of that nature, keep that out of the compost. Bones also attract a lot of pests, as do meat products. I would lump fats and lards in that category as well. Anything oily that's gonna get smelly is gonna bring unwanted vis visitors to your compost pile. Um, raw or whole cooked eggs, that's something that should also keep out as well because of that risk of attracting animals. However, eggshells are an excellent thing to add to your compost pile for the calcium. You know, a lot of um, the microorganisms, particularly earthworms, will actually utilize that calcium in their natural cycles. So that's a good thing to add, but wash your eggshells, maybe crush them up a little before you add them to your compost pile. Let's talk about dog and cat waste. It never fails. When we're talking about compost, someone will ask, well, can I compost the litter box? Or can I compost my dog's poop? And anyone with pets knows that we're always thinking about cleaning up after them. So that is something that you do want to keep out of your compost pile for a very, very good reason. Unless that pile heats up consistently and long enough to a high enough temperature, there's a huge pathogen risk when we're handling pet waste in our compost pile. Those pathogens can be bacterial, they can be parasitic, but that's not something we wanna be handling, especially with our bare hands as we're gardening and it's something that should absolutely stay out of a compost pile for human health reasons. There are many things that might actually be toxic to the plants that you're using the compost with or to the soil organisms themselves, and they should be avoided. 
Black walnut parts, if anyone has a black walnut tree, you know that those trees have an allelopathic chemical in their plant parts that keep all other vegetation from growing. Anytime you compost any part of a black walnut tree, whether that be the walnut shells and husks, the leaves, I think even the twigs, that will actually inhibit things from growing when you add that compost to a garden. So you wanna keep that out as well. Pressure treated wood, very similar. It's a treated substance. It's gonna impact your pile and you're not gonna to wanna to add that to a garden. Glossy colored paper not only takes forever to break down, but a lot of those inks and preservatives used in those documents may have toxic chemicals in them. Some are derived from soy products, but unless you check closely, you're not gonna know that typically. So try to avoid the glossy colored paper. Charcoal ash in small enough quantities could be added, but these large briquettes, that's way too much charcoal ash for any kind of pile that a homeowner might have. It's best to not add these to your compost pile. Diapers. Yes, even the natural diapers. Similar to cat and dog waste, we do not add human waste to our compost pile because there is a pathogen and a disease risk. Keep that out. Also, many diapers have absorbent um, materials within them that might not be natural, even though the outside of the diaper is a natural material. So just steer clear of diapers. Those go in the trash. Plant material that's been treated with pesticides. That could be lawn clippings. That could be garden prunings or trimmings. If you don't know what's been applied to that area, try to skip those materials because a lot of the chemicals that we use in our lawns and gardens can persist for a very long time, even through the composting process. And then when you apply them to your garden, they're still there and they will impact the plants that you're trying to grow. A really good example of that would be hay or straw materials like you might get from a farm or from horse manure. Well, a lot of pastures and a lot of hay fields are treated with herbicides that can, even after going through the digestive system of the horse or the cow, persist for up to a year and a half, and they'll actually inhibit seed growth and germination in your garden. Even after that manure has been processed by the animal, okay, and then also processed in the compost pile, that chemical is so persistent, it's still gonna be there a year and a half later. So always know the source of your manure and of your hay and your straw products any kind of grass clippings or garden trimmings as well. Citrus peels. Now we have a question mark next to that one. Um, I compost citrus peels, but many people do not, especially if they're relying on worms or the soil microorganisms to really do the bulk of the work in their pile. Citrus peels have citric acid and a lot of oils in them. A lot of our soil biology does not like that and does not respond well to it. So especially if you have a lot of citrus, a lot of lemon rinds, orange peelings, things of that nature, it's best to either spread them out into a large area, not include them at all, or cut them into very small pieces so they break down a little faster through other methods. Um, but that's something that a lot of our little soil workhorses really try to avoid is citrus. So if you have them concentrated in an area, just keep in mind things in that area might not decompose quite so fast. Citrus does take a very long time to break down as well. Be sure to post your questions to the message board, to that Facebook group. Uh, the link has been sent to you. And remember, that's where you guys have the opportunity to really interact as students, both with us, your instructors, and with each other. Be sure to post pictures as well. We like to see what you're up to.